Good evening on this Feast of Calamus, the presentation of Christ in the temple and the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We have waited, O God, for thy loving kindness in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the world's end. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God, even upon his holy hill. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We have waited, O God, for thy loving kindness in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the world's end. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy mind and with all thy strength, with all thy soul, with all thy strength and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. And write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we humbly beseech thy majesty that as thy only begotten Son was this day presented in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so we may be presented unto thee with pure and clean hearts. By the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. The lesson is written in the third chapter of the book of the prophet Malachi, beginning at the first verse. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, said the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, 
that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, as in former years. And I will come near to you, to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. We have waited, O God, for thy loving kindness in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the world's end. Like as we have heard, so have we seen in the city of our God, even upon his holy hill. Alleluia, alleluia, I will worship him toward thy holy temple, and will sing praises unto thy name. Alleluia. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel is written in the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 22nd verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death, before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, 
and the grace of God was upon him. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good evening again on this feast of the presentation of Christ in the temple, the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary, commonly known as Candlemas. The holy mysteries are offered to the honor and glory of Almighty God, and in prayer that the light of Christ may shine in our lives, that we may reflect his glory and love to the world around us. In our cycle of prayer, we continue our prayers for the Anglican Church in America, the Diocese of the West, for Bishop Owen Williams, his clergy and people. We continue our prayers for the Church in Canada, for the Church of the Resurrection in Edmonton, Alberta, for Father Davis, Canon Elliot, and all the people of that parish. We remember in our prayers today the sick, the sorrowful, the suffering, the dying, Commending to God's mercy and care, Sonia Archibald, Sandra Oz, Father Doug Oz, Cap Peter Downs, Doug Crawley, Donna Moore, Kelly Quinn, Terry Huberts, Jim Ducarm, Colin Rich, Jenny, Pedro Vajil, Paul Diford. We continue our prayers for Bishop Ruben Rodriguez, who has contracted COVID. For all suffering from the COVID-19 virus here in Canada and around the world. For those suffering from anxiety, isolation, loneliness, and depression, for the homeless, and the unemployed, and for all who have desired our prayers and worthy as we are. We continue our prayers for our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth II as Her Majesty celebrates the 69th anniversary of her accession to the throne on Saturday, that God may bless her with many more glorious and happy years to reign over us. Finally, of your charity, I bid your prayers for the souls of the faithful departed, remembering especially Noel Robinson, John Middlemas, Frank Laron Sr., Clifton Hitchings, William Donnelly, His Late Majesty King George VI of happy memory, and all whose year's mind occurs at this time. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This feast, the presentation of the Christ child in the temple, and the purification of his mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, marks the traditional end of the Christmas season in the Christian calendar. Forty days after the birth of the Lord, the time of purification had come according to the Mosaic law. Mary and Joseph came to the temple in Jerusalem 
to present their baby boy to the, to the Lord their God. They come to offer the ritual sacrifice required by God on behalf of their firstborn son, and in so doing, to give thanks to God for the gift of his new life. In his gospel narrative, St. Luke tells of two old people, Simeon and Anna, who waited patiently for this day, not knowing the when or the how, but believing that the Lord would indeed come suddenly into his temple, as proclaimed by the prophet Malachi. When that day came, they recognized the child in Mary's arms as the one they had looked and longed for, indeed the one whom Israel had longed and looked for, the Messiah, the Christ, the eternal Son of God, who would come to redeem his people. As we are told by St. Luke, the aged Simeon took the Christ child into his arms and inspired by the Holy Spirit, uttered the words which the church universal has come to profess in prayer through the centuries, the great Nunc Dimittis. In those prophetic words of Simeon, we have revealed to us what God had prepared from all eternity. In the presentation of the Christ child, God fulfilled his promise to restore his people and to offer them the gift of salvation in his son, Jesus Christ. We also have revealed in Simeon's prophetic words the revelation that God's plan of salvation is not exclusive to the chosen people of Israel, but is for all peoples in all times and in all places. Jesus Christ is the universal Savior, the light of the world, the revelation of God to all nations and peoples, the good news of the angels to the shepherds and kings is also the good news of salvation to the whole world. The presentation of the Christ child in the temple completes the beautiful infancy narratives we read in the Gospels. But that is not all we celebrate today. No, we are on the threshold between the two great focal points of the Christian year, Christmas, the nativity of our Lord, and Easter, the resurrection of our Lord. In order to understand the connection between the Feast of Candlemas and the momentous events of Passion Tide and Easter, we need for a moment to, reason, to think of the reasons why Mary and Joseph brought the Christ child into the temple in Jerusalem. The presentation of Christ in the temple is to redeem him, to sacrifice to the Lord God a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons as required by God's law. The redeeming of the firstborn is done in thanksgiving to God and the animal offering a propitiation. In this we recall the ancient story of Abraham and of his son Isaac foreshadowing the sacrifice of God's own son upon the altar of the cross. According to the command of the Lord, Abraham took his only son Isaac to, to a very high place to offer him in sacrifice to God. There Abraham made an altar of wood and bound his son Isaac to it. He raised the knife and was about to strike dead his beloved son when the angel of the Lord came and told him to stay his hand. By God's design, a ram caught in a nearby thicket was sacrificed in place of Isaac. In his gospel narrative, St. Luke points out the irony of the Christ child, the only begotten Son of God, the Redeemer of the whole world, being brought to the temple in Jerusalem so that he could be redeemed through the blood of an animal sacrifice. 
St. Luke reveals, and we believe, that redemption cannot come from the sacrifice of bulls or goats or turtle doves or two young pigeons. The eternal redemption of humanity comes only from the sacrifice of God's only Son upon the cross of Calvary. And on that fateful day, which we call Good Friday, God did not stay the hand of the executioners as he had with Abraham. For upon the cross of Calvary, Jesus would accomplish once for all the full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. As we think of this feast day, the Feast of Candlemas, when churches around the world have their candles lit and the people where they can gather hold those lighted and blessed candles, representing the light of Christ shining in the dark places of the world, the light the darkness could not overcome. We need to recall in our mind's eye our own responsibility to be the face of Christ in the world and to the people around us, of our calling by the power of the Holy Spirit to be light in the world, pointing to the one who is the eternal light of the world, the Redeemer of humanity, he who is Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On this Feast of Candlemas, we pray that the light of Christ may ever shine upon us and within us, casting away the darkness of ignorance, hatred, and sin, and showing forth the love and saving grace of God for all peoples. We say with Simeon, as the evening draws closing, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Full of grace are thy lips, because God hath blessed thee forever. Receive, O Holy Father, almighty and blasting God, the spotless host which I, thine unworthy servant, offer unto thee, the living and true God, for my numberless sins, offenses, and negligences, for all who stand here wrong and also for all faithful Christians, both living and departed, that into them it may avail for salvation and to life eternal. Amen. unto thee, O Lord, the cup of salvation, humbly beseeching thy mercy, that in the sight of thy divine majesty it may send before thee the sweet-smelling savour for our salvation, and for that of the whole world. Amen. In a humble spirit, with a contrite heart, may we be accepted thee, O Lord, and so let us set for us be offered in thy sight this day that may please him unto thee, O Lord God. Amen. Come, O thou font of holiness, mighty eternal God, and bless this sacrifice made ready for thy holy name. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, and so shall I do unto thy name, that I may show the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I love the habitation of thy house and the place where thou honor dwellest. Lord, be to the Father and to 
to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive, O Holy Trinity, this oblation which we offer unto thee in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. To the honor and blessed Mary, ever virgin, blessed John Baptist, the holy apostle Peter and Paul, of these and all the saints, that it may avail for their honor and for our salvation. And may they vouchsafe to intercede for us in heaven, whose memory we keep on earth, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. The Lord receive the sacrifice at my hands to the praise and glory of his name both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to hear our prayers, and that these gifts which we offer unto thy divine majesty may be an acceptable offering in thy sight. Do thou show forth on us the succor of thy loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to me, thine unworthy servant, and those bishops in communion with me, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them, who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. beseeching thee to grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, chiefly the glorious and most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, and all thy saints, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed. 
by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Here also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the with the, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, Thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of Thy glory in the face of Thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And at institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take heed, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. As our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Deliver us, O Lord, we beseech thee from all evils, past, present, and to come. And at the intercession of thy glorious of the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with thy blessed apostle Peter and Paul, with Andrew and all the saints, fail thy peace and thy days, that by the help of thine availing we shall be free from sins and safe from all distress. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, Throughout all ages, world without end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, Grant us thy peace. O Lord Jesus Christ, I did say, thine apostles, peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you. Regard not my sins, but the faith of thy church, and God save the grant of thy peace and unity according to thy will, who livest and reignest God throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, Son of Mary, by the will of the Father and the glory of the Holy Ghost, thy death is but life unto the world. Deliver me by this thy most sacred body and blood from all mine iniquities and from every evil. May we cleave unto thy commandments and suffer in every day separated from thee. That the partaking of thy body and blood, O Lord Jesus Christ, which I am worthy presumed to receive, turn not to my judgment and condemnation, but of thy goodness daily me for healing and protection of both the soul and body, who livest and reignest with the Father in the union of those one God through all ages, world without end. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. 
Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. It was revealed unto Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's anointed. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of this mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, and although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, O Lord our God, that these holy mysteries which thou hast given unto us for the assurance of our salvation, May by the intercession of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, both in this life and in that which is to come, be prof unto us for the healing of our souls. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Depart in peace. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen.